Hey there, folks. It's Matthew Seville here with SLRLounge.com and another episode of Weekly Edit for you all. Today, we're going to build on the technique that we were talking about last week, the process being using Lightroom to edit photos before and after going into Photoshop for something more advanced. And the name of the game is all about doing your foundation editing beforehand and then doing your stylized editing, stuff that you might regret later or maybe you just rethink, you know, a little bit of burning and dodging or a little bit of a stylized edit. You might rethink it later. So you don't want to have to redo all of your advanced Photoshop work just because you decided to, you know, create a panorama of black and white images or something like that. So that's the huge no-no here. This image here is quite pretty. Uh, it's a great portrait. But if you look down here in the film strip, what do we have? We have a bunch of horribly cropped other images. And if you are a fan of SLR Lounge, you may have seen before and already guessed what we're up to here. This is going to be, uh, hopefully, if it comes together, the Brenizer method or Brenizer, uh, Brenizer method of stitching together bunches of different photos to create a panorama but not just a panorama in the traditional sense. This is going to be an image that enhances the shallow depth of field of this photo. Because what I did was I zoomed all the way in to 200 millimeters on my 70 to 200, and I clicked these close-up photos. The shallow depth of field is, well, it's really, really shallow at 200 millimeters. Compared to, say, if I had just zoomed out to 100 or 70 millimeters, I could have got this whole scene into the photo, but the depth of field would not be this shallow in the final image. So that's a really brief uh, explanation of why we're doing this. Let's just get into it and process these. I'm going to hit Control A on my PC or Command A on my Mac and I'm going to hit D for develop and let's go into the develop module and just do a base foundation correction of these images. I want to start with my base soft presets here in the SLO Lounge preset system. I want to try extra soft because I again I want to really enhance the shallow depth of field so negative clarity is great for enhancing shallow depth of field. Then I'm going to zoom in and just make sure that this extra soft preset didn't harm my skin detail too much. And it looks great. This uh, old Mark 1 70 to 200 is still tack sharp at the at least in the central area at f2.8 and 200 millimeters. So we're good to go here. I really like what the preset has done already overall to this image to kind of tone down the highlights and everything. I've got a pretty bright dress here. Maybe uh, negative 40, that's actually pretty good. Maybe negative 50 or something, just to bring it down a little bit more. And then I might just bump up the shadows a tiny bit. Usually we do in most of our presets, but the extra soft preset, it has its reasons for uh, adjusting everything this way. It kind of helps to soften everything out. The other thing I'm gonna undo is the vibrance and saturation. I want to leave color in this image and decide what I want to do with it later after I go into Photoshop and do something advanced. So again, that's my technique here. I want to get this in a good foundation spot, a, a position so that I can take it into Photoshop without coming back in later into Lightroom and say, oh, I clipped that highlighter shadow. I got to redo the whole stitching process. And it looks like the only thing left for me to do is maybe to correct my temperature, which I want it to be nice and warm, but again, I don't want it to be too over the top. So we're in a shady, and there's a little bit of clouds in the sky, shady area, clouds in the sky, so I'm definitely going to like it right about 6,000 Kelvin or so. And sure enough, this looks great. The last thing I need to do before I go into Photoshop with all of these images is I want to turn on my lens correction for this lens because the edges of th these photos are going to become very important. If I go through here, you can see I didn't overlap them that much. I might have, I should have overlapped them a lot more probably, but since I didn't overlap them much at all, I'm gonna turn on the profile so that it brightens up these corners. It might have done it a little bit too much. I've got uh, a little bit of manual correction by default in this preset. So if I turn on the profile, I might want to dial that lens vignetting back a little bit to zero so that the profile corrects the vignetting itself automatically. Now that this profile has corrected the distortion and the vignetting for this lens at 200 millimeters, 
every single one of these images should seamlessly uh, well we'll hope we hope for it uh, it should come together quite nicely and one other thing as you'll notice I have auto sync turned on here so as I edit all of these photos the all the uh, subsequent uh, nine other images are going to receive the same exact editing which I like to use this method if you don't like auto sync then you can simply edit the first photo and then click synchronize check all maybe if you did some sort of spot removal or uh, whatever you don't want to synchronize that to all the other ones then you would just hit synchronize and it would synchronize it to all the other ones and all right we're good to go here let's right click on the image here and go edit in merge to panorama in Photoshop now it's gonna take a while to get these things to open up uh, oh I didn't update Photoshop even though I did update Lightroom to the latest version but since these were taken on a Nikon D700 I already know that my version of Photoshop can handle these raw files because the D700 is a six-year-old camera so I'm just gonna click open anyway and let's try auto it's got blend images together already selected that's one important feature I don't need vignette or geometric distortion correction because I've already done that as much as I need to in Lightroom so let's just click OK and let it do its thing it is unfortunately going to take quite a while to do its thing because I'm opening 10 raw images in Photoshop I think this camera I mean this computer has uh, 8 gigabytes of memory so it should be able to handle it but it will take quite a while you are gonna have a lot of fun waiting if you're using a different camera like a uh, 20 or 30 plus megapixel camera maybe the Nikon D800 or the Canon 5D Mark III because that will you're beginning to be merging uh, 10 or more layers of raw photos and that could add up to a 5 to 10 gigabyte PSD file in the end which you would have to save as a PSB file because PSD files can only be uh, like two gigabytes or less than two gigabytes uh, but anyways we'll get into that and I'll solve that problem actually by just merging all of these layers when they're done I don't need them to go back into Photoshop as a uh, multi-layered file so I'll flatten the image before I go back into Photoshop so that it can possibly save it as a regular PSD so that I can edit that PSD in Lightroom further otherwise I might not be able to do that I don't think Lightroom is very friendly towards 5 gigabyte or 10 gigabyte file image files anyways folks here it is it looks like it stitched together perfectly the, the thing I want to do is just quickly glance at where the central image is and just look at it really quick to see if any of the edges I'm gonna zoom in here I want to see if any of the edges got messed up sometimes if it stitches through a leg or a very important edge or something then it might uh, miss a line just a tiny bit but since almost everything in this image is slightly out of focus I'm pretty much good to go here what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it just a little bit uh, let's see I don't want it to be 30 by 15 I want it to be 30 by 20 which is a, just a general 3 to 2 you know 4 by 6 aspect ratio actually it looks like I might be better off with a 16 by 9 ratio which is another common ratio well, you know what either way if I if I do it either way I'm gonna have to throw away some of the image so I'm going to clear this crop here and I'm going to crop it just a little bit outside of the lines of where the uh, edges are like this and I'm gonna hit enter there and here's what I'm gonna do next I'm going to hit I'm going to merge all of these I'm gonna flatten the image because these uh, stitch together quite nicely so I'm not too worried about having to do this editing again or uh, needing all of those individual layers what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my selection tool to warp these edges back across the uh, cropping area and that's just a quick way to kind of so I don't have to do cloning along these edges here well I could do cloning here let's uh, just hit s for stamp tool I'm gonna hold down my space bar and drag it around so that it looks good and let's uh, make this brush here a little bit by hitting my right bracket I'm gonna hold down alt and then just clone that there like this since this is just uh, easy bokeh uh, it should be no problem to uh, stitch it together I mean clone it together uh, so that it looks nice same thing with the corner down here actually you know what if I clone from here to here it's gonna look weird so I'm gonna zoom out and just use my marquee tool selection tool and then we'll use the warp tool I'm gonna to do transform 
and go in here and then go to warp and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly drag this off the edge of the photo that way it gives me a n more normal transition without having weird clone marks or anything I'm going to do that as well to the upper corner here like this really quick edit transform warp and then just drag that up there like that just a little bit that looks good Let's hit enter enter and you sometimes need to inspect the edges here to make sure that there isn't a visible seam when you use that technique but it looks like I'm good to go here oh I saw something that is the snoot of the flash that I used to illuminate them let's clone that out really quick I'm gonna hold down alt and I'm going to just clone this uh, over really quickly nobody would probably ever know but I know so I'm going to just erase it really quick uh, for my own personal uh, peace of mind all right let's zoom back out here I think all my corners are great oh I've got one more down here in this corner let's hit M for marquee tool again and then let's edit transform warp and just barely drag that off the edge of the screen and we're done enter Oh, it looks like I may have created a little bit of a seam here when I did that warp. So let's do Alt and stamp this down here like that just a little bit to clean up that edge. Check the other edges around here looking good. All right. It looks like my file is only only 300 megabytes. So I'm going to hit Control S and Control W to save and close that. And we'll go back to Lightroom here and see how it looks. Here we are in Lightroom with this beautifully shallow depth image and I'm going to hit R to just kind of pick a crop here. Now I can do whichever crop I want. I could use a 2 to 3 ratio crop because that's very common or I could use a 16 by 9 ratio crop because that's becoming very common as well these days and maybe crop up a little bit if I want to uh, frame them differently or crop down a little bit if I want to emphasize the reflection much more so than the uh, upper areas and I think I really like this let's just see about what we might do to uh, finalize this image I've got my blinking highlights warning blinking highlight and shadows already turned on so maybe I'll just barely play around with the processing just a kind of tiny bit to make it pop I want to maybe add a tiny bit of a vignette since it's got this romantic moody feel where's my uh, vignetting presets I want to use post crop vignette we could uh, try a little bit of a square radial. Ooh, actually radial heavy works beautifully. Radial medium, radial heavy. Maybe I'll use radial heavy and just dial it back a tiny bit. I'm just getting OCD at this point. 35, 40, that looks great all around. I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, you know what I need to do is I need to hold down control while I'm in my crop tool and I need to straighten this out just a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna hold down control again and try it with a vertical line. Uh, maybe a little bit more maybe I went too far I think somewhere in the middle is probably good dial it back okay there we go I had a little bit of a crookedness going on here this is looking great except all I want to do now is do a burn and dodge oh plus one stop maybe that'll work my plus plus and minus presets here are a little bit off usually there's an SLR lounge preset for 0.5 and I think that perfectly does the trick here. And there we have it. That's beautiful. Let's do a control apostrophe or create virtual copy. And let's hit V for black and white. That looks great. But what I want to do is maybe hit it with a preset to do a little bit of warming up for that uh, skin tone there. Maybe let's try medium and heavy. Medium, heavy, medium, heavy. I like heavy. Okay, that's great. Let's go back to the color version. And of course, let's do something warm and beautifully faded. I want to use the curves so that it doesn't affect most of the tones of the images and it just barely washes it out. Oh, that's beautiful. You know what, though? Because this is a reflection in water and because it's a, you know, a cool, uh, there was a little bit of an overcast going on. I'm going to try the cool neutral washes and just go through those. Yeah, see, these work beautifully as well. I really like the azure and the cool cross. Oh, I can't decide. Cool cross, vintage punch, cool cross. Nope. Let's uh, let's do neutral wash, cool cross, and there you have it, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you in our next tutorial.